metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. Frame is down. We'll definitely be here for a while. That sounds brilliant. We need to take a break from our space exploration. Now we'll have time to focus on hobbies and activities. You mean your underwater calligraphy? Nah, I gave that up years ago. How about when you collected shiny things? I told you, I'm past that phase. <laughs> also, I told you that in secret. Come on. My new hobby adventure is sculpture. <sighs> My only hobby is this ship, keeping it from exploding on us. Finding stones, finding stones. Not shiny things, definitely different. I'll make some art today. Oh, you're a fine specimen. <laughs> I could make a circle or a cube. Damages. <laughs> Not for me. What's the most beautiful thing I can think of to sculpt today? I've got it. I will make this a self portrait. Huh. What the? Uh... Are we in a different spot? Hey, Ben, what gives? When did you fix the ship? I didn't yet. It needs a ton more work. We could be stuck here for days. And tell me who put this giant stone here? That's a weird question, Carlin. This planet has hundreds of stones, none of which can be used to fix this confounded ship. But could the stone be organic? That would mean it would have to be alive, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, well, sort of. <laughs> it's rather complicated. Many years ago, chemistry was divided into parts, organic and inorganic. Here's how they separated it. Basically, organic chemistry meant things that were alive, and inorganic meant things that were not alive. Chemists from the olden times thought that organic substances could not be created. They could only exist in nature. They believed that only inorganic substances could be created by man. We had no chance at making life. <laughs> But that changed in the 19th century. The very first organic substance was finally created inside a laboratory. Now scientists knew that we could create organic materials, life. Sure, the term organic refers to things that are alive, like you and me, and all the animals. But it can refer to other life forms, like trees and plants, insects, even bacteria. There are so many things that are now considered organic, like some types of plastics or medicines. It's wild, and there are 20 million types of recognized organic compounds. Then how do we find out what's organic or not? This seems complex. It's not complex. It all comes down to a very simple equation. Every organic substance contains a carbon atom and a hydrogen atom, and they have to be connected to each other. Carbon is the important factor here. It is the main building block of all organic compounds. One carbon molecule can connect with up to four other atoms with limitless combinations of organic compounds. Isn't it interesting? Wow, these things are great for building things. They're made for, for construction. 
So then, are you saying that by using carbon we can construct almost any material known to man and use it for the ship? Uh, well, maybe. Anything's possible with science, at least in theory. Look at that! Hmm? There's another one! Well, there's no need to panic now. Maybe they just had a series of, um, tiny earthquakes, right? <laughs> I'm sure that's what moved the rocks across the surface of the planet. This is weird. I'd almost prefer a tiny earthquake. Let's talk things over in my lab. Tell me more about how we can use carbon to make my ship even more incredible. Huh? What's going on? I left it right here. I'd remember, it couldn't just walk away. Ow! Blasted, naughty space rock! Ow! <coughs> hey guys, how go the repairs? Science can only go so far, and we're slow in our progress to create new carbon materials. Wow. It's a lot harder than it looks, I'm afraid. Organic molecules happen to be a whole world in and of themselves. But carbon is so fun! Look here, I made this with the carbon constructor. Is this something to fix the ship and get us home? Of course not. You said we should focus on our hobbies. No way. That's a waste of time and resources. We need to focus on repairing the engine. Oh, Carlin, I didn't realize you were in such a hurry. <laughs> always in a rush. That's what I always say, right? No time for hobbies when there's space to conquer. Speaking of weird things, why can't we always attach carbon atoms to each other? Isn't there something to stick them like glue? <gasps> You're so very right. The solution was sitting there this whole time. Attaching carbon atoms to each other is kind of hard. <clears throat> when dealing with organic compounds, things tend to get a little bit messy. Good news, one element can help. It's really good at sticking to more than one carbon molecule at once. This element is known as palladium. Palladium is a precious rare metal with crazy interesting properties. When two carbon atoms meet near palladium, they become attracted to each other. Then the carbon atoms that are joined together break off and form their own little club. Palladium can do this with multiple carbon compounds over and over. Palladium creates one new larger organic molecule by continually joining carbon atoms and joining and joining. Okay, Palladium, I think we've got the idea now. That way, making organic materials becomes easy. And not to mention, it's safer and a lot less expensive. But how could it get even safer? Carbon atoms are almost boring. <laughs> Very boring. What just happened? Eh, it's probably nothing. <laughs> just another tiny earthquake. We shouldn't do work if there are earthquakes happening around us. Let's just take a rest and wait till they pass us. Nope, nope. You both should keep working. A ship can't fix itself. I'll take care of the earthquakes myself. I wonder. Rock brethren! I am returning your, uh, son. Or daughter, I'm not sure. But I didn't hurt a single hair on his head. Or a piece of rock, you know. Put our spaceship down, kindly. Yeah, I think I might have been in space too long. As if you hear what I'm saying.
stadium is truly phenomenal stuff. We fixed the motherboard and even upgraded the engine. We'll be out of here in no time. <laughs> oh, what happened to all this rock here? <sighs> it's been a day. Daco, I was wondering. Are all known life forms really made of carbon compounds? They're only organic substances? That's right. Living means organics. But space is such a big place. Is it possible that there's inorganic stuff that's alive? Anything is possible that we don't yet know about. Silicon is pretty similar to carbon, too, in very weird ways. They're almost identical in how they make chemical compounds. Imagine one day replacing all the carbon compounds with silicone ones, since they work the exact same way. <laughs> Wouldn't that be interesting? What kind of stuff does silicon make anyway? Uh, it's found in rocks, and in stones, and also in sand. Smart rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, smart rocks. That's rich. In 2010, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded to three scientists, Richard Heck, Eiichi Nagishi, and Akira Suzuki. They created the method of carbon construction using palladium. However, no one has yet created or discovered silicon-based life forms. Science still has a long way to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> 